welcome everybody. I'm so excited that you all are here. Let me move the video out of the way so I can see what I'm talking about. So this is this us. This is what we do on Fridays at noon Eastern time. Just get together. Um, everybody is welcome. I do want to just take a second to talk about the overview of the purpose of our chat um, and one update. Um, it is just that. We just get together, chat. We talk about um, different topics that are of interest. So in the chat box, let me know if there's a certain topic that you want to throw in the calendar of the schedule so we can talk about it in one of the upcoming um, sessions. This one, right, this series, I guess you can say we're in right now, is really all about client, client interactions. Um, we did a little bit on marketing. We did 20 ways of how to be a virtual doula, 20 different ways to um, diversify as a virtual doula. We talked last week about um, training, um, training opportunities that are out there. So in this time where it may be a little low for you, um, what kind of training opportunities you can try to, you know, jump on to diversify. And uh, I think next we're going to talk about contracts. And so, you know, we're all over the board and spectrum as to the different topics that we can talk about. So if you have ideas, put them in the chat and we'll put it on the schedule. So this is it. Um, we've been doing this for a couple of weeks. I literally just came to me as a talking to a couple of doulas in the area. Um, I have a military background. I live right next to military base. And so a lot of the moms and doulas that we worked with are now elsewhere. Um, and so this is, uh, got me to really think about trying to just stay connected to them virtually. And so this is where it rose out of. From If you know of others that are interested, feel free to forward it to them. Like I said, it's been through word of mouth, it's through other organizations that I've just let know that we get together and have this chat and they've um, sent out invites um, on my behalf to their um, membership list. Some of it has been, if I know a particular area we haven't connected with, I just look on the different donor capital um, doula match, different websites, and then I just invite folks to see if they're interested. Um, just all for the labor of love of just trying to connect, um, make sure we figure out what this new world that we're living in, come to some sort of understanding, share our understanding, our interpretation of things, policies, so forth, and collaborate and enjoy. We have a lot going on. If you're um, um, like me, <laughs> I have a 10-year-old and a two-year-old, so I'm working, I'm um, homeschooling, trying to figure that out, um, working with clients, and I also am in a doctoral program um, in counseling, um, specifically on trauma, um, women's trauma um, through labor and delivery and pregnancy and so forth. So uh, lots on everybody's plates, and we're all just trying to figure out how to do it well and successfully and to serve as we're looking to serve. Um, so that's that. Um, I will say going forward, um, one of the, one of our sisters, share it with me and she reminded me that every doula is not female so and every doula doesn't um necessarily identify with the gender and so i want to make sure that everybody understands that this is um inclusive and so going forward i'm not going to call it the doula sisterhood chat it's just going to be doula community chat because i want to make sure that everybody knows that they are um invited and welcomed um so i just want to make sure everybody knows that so in the emails and things they'll just say doula community chat going forward okay um, so again, I'm Bianca Marie. I live in the Maryland area, DMV area. Um, my background very quickly is public health. Um, I've always been a healthcare administrator, clinic administrator, and worked for the federal government for a number of years, managing billion dollar uh, women health programs. Um, all of my degrees are in women's studies, women's health, public health, um, and I became a doula um, before I knew what a doula was. Um, I've always just tried to make sure that the women in my family, my network, my community um, were healthy and complete health from a public health standpoint and lens, meaning their physical, their social, their financial, their emotion, and all those other aspects of to being a healthy person. Because um, I believe if you help a mom be healthy, uh, especially through pregnancy, and postpartum. If you help a mom be healthy, then you are positioning that mom and that family to be healthy. Um, more than likely, the mom is healthy and has a grasp on her health and eating well and so forth, then more than likely that trickles out to their um, family members. And I believe that. I believe women are the backbone of our family.
families and community and so forth. So I'm not going to go into a dissertation or rant on that, but just want to share as to who I am and where I'm coming from when I invite folks and, and, and gather us together. It's just, I want us to have a place, a safe place as doulas to throw our ideas, to talk, communicate, and especially um, speaking to some of my doulas that are in areas that they don't even really know, you know, maybe one other doula in the area. And so I want us to make sure we have a community because we're doing important work. So let's keep going. So we already did this introductions and I'll send this out afterwards to everybody. Um, so you have it as a reference, but um, today we're gonna just talk about client uh, interactions with clients and packages. And one of the things I just wanted to point out when we're talking about interaction with clients and um, let me know in the chat and let me know um, if I'm preaching to a choir because we can certainly move on. It's just that even in this virtual world that we in, there are some key things that I think can help us um, ride the wave, if you would, um, help us um, be positioned to still give value and help us make sure that we are serving in the way that we want to serve. Um, so one is starting with communication and I see a spelling error. <laughs> so communication, and there's many ways that we can communicate. So making sure that uh, we think outside of the box and use all the communication tools that are at our disposal. Um, and being consistent with our communication. Uh, we've talked in the past and a lot of doulas are, are realizing that um, your current clients, those who you currently contracted with, certainly you want to make sure you're consistent with interacting with them, consistent with communicating with them. But even some of your former clients, um, I shared this story that I had one client whose um, youngest child now is a little bit over two. And I did, uh, I reached out to even my former clients and I reached out to her and she shared um, with me that she needed my help again um, because she's trying to balance being home working and um, you know having the children at home and figuring out how that works and she knew that she um, needed a trusted person that can help her figure out what her new schedule should be how she can try to manage it what resources are available to her um, and so we're um, we're back working together again and so I say that to say just be a consistent presence in your clients lives as much as you can and it may look different for each client and it may look different in the season that they're in um, especially as we're all trying to figure out how um, to make everything work right now um, creativity try to be creative um, with not only our communication and how ways to um, connect with our clients but just be creative and figure out what their needs are what the um, there's uh, I shared before also that there is a client that um, was having health issues and didn't really want to eat a lot. Um, and so one of the doulas um, used to be a caterer. And so now she does, uh, she partners with other restaurants and other um, chefs in the area. And so now she has diversified that through her, as a doula, through her um, um, practice, she gives, um, she um, does food menu planning and then delivery to um, her clients and so she's helping meet that need about um, eating right now and options of eating and healthy eating options and so I'm um, just just creative you know a lot of us as doulas we had um, I think like Barbara mentioned and others you know we have other backgrounds we had other careers probably before we became doulas or other um, uh, skills and experiences that could really help us meet those needs of moms and their families in a creative way um, and the last one is just that change and I won't harp on that at all but it's inevitable just as we're going through this change now to figure out how to work in this virtual world um, with the pandemic but in the future there's gonna be something else and so being versatile and being open to change um, is a way that we can always make sure that we are providing the services that are needed that are timely and that are um, attentive and attuned to the needs of our clients and so our virtual world can work still uh, I want to make sure everybody knows and has hope that whatever you're doing there's a way to do it well in a virtual space and make sure that you are honoring what you're trying to do in your passions and serving your clients and so just some quick examples as to during um, I call them day and night clients or during the day and um, post 
postpartum, you know, night clients. Um, so just some quick examples as to how you can interact during the day, like just like we're on now, you know, video chats, phone calls, um, outside chats. And I put that there because, of course, if it's possible, um, but there's another doula I know that goes to her clients. They live in a smaller area and sometimes <laughs> they talk from outside. So she stays in her car or stays at the end of the driveway and she chats to the moms and it's a, like 15 minute ch check in with the moms and their moms get some fresh air. They live, you know, in a warmer climate. And so they step outside and they talk and it's just a quick interaction, but it helps. It gets her out of the house a little bit. It gets her clients to get able to get outside for some fresh air. And it keeps um, her clients um, know to look for that they, that they'll be able to interact and talk with her. So just a quick um, interaction. Uh, mail, um, some of doulas are offering um, care packages um, to their clients and it doesn't have to be anything robust. It could be something as small as a postcard or a thinking of you card or if they're not feeling well, a get well card and some sort of small trinket. Um, I put party favor there because I've um, talked to some doulas that are having success when different party favor or wedding favor websites where they have little trinkets. Some of them are 99 cents, 199, 299, you know, very affordable. Um, and they're including that into the packages. So just examples as to some kind of interactions that you can do or touch points you can have with the clients. So again, just thinking outside of the box and being creative. Um, for nighttime, again, so during the day, you know, people are up, families are up, kids are up, moving about. And so those are things that um, you can do during the day. But at night, usually people are usually sleeping or other siblings are usually sleeping. And so some of the interactions that are working well for the evening time are text messages, you know, things that a mom can do quickly and it can be quietly. Um, text messages, emails, um, and some clients, some doulas have also expanded their packages to include midnight fire site chats and that's just a catchy name but it simply is that you know if a mom needs to call them at the midnight hour they have quote unquote office hours or time frames where the mom can call two o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning um, depending on what kind of arrangement they have but you know there's plenty of times where mom could be trying to breastfeed at two o'clock in the morning and having trouble and struggle and frustrated and you know she may not want to wake up the spouse or not want to um be too loud for the kids but you know she wants to reach out to somebody and so if you have made that agreement to be available for midnight hours and again this is something you can do virtually then you can set that up with your mom to be available for some sort of midnight check-in or chat so those are just some quick um, examples of how we can interact during um, our virtual world um, going quickly and it all is about knowing the needs of your moms and your families and you don't assume and don't assume that the needs, the quote unquote traditional or the regular needs or the regular ways of the past, meaning before pandemic, are the same needs now. And so having that conversation with your clients um, when you're doing that check in, it could be key because it could be a totally different direction. Um, like I love. Um, um, I mean, saying that she's, you know, changed thinking now that she wants to help with, you know, that kind of the depression, the postpartum depression um, specialty in that area. That's a new way, you know, it, before she may have not, that may have not been as um, pronounced or prevalent with her clientele. And maybe now, you know, certainly a lot of changes, a lot of people struggling um, during the pandemic with, um, emotions and processing things so that may be more prevalent now in your clientele than it was before so figuring out what those needs are and then making sure you try to um, meet them as you can and that aligns with you because you don't want to offer anything that doesn't align with you that doesn't sit well with you and that you can't serve from a place of being full so I'll just put that plug as a reminder right and quickly I think I want to switch over to well, let's go, let's continue this and then I'll switch over to the other document and then we can open it up for chat. So basic things about the client packages. Um, and I should have checked the chat. Let me just check the chat to see if anybody had any question before we go on. Okay, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of chats. Okay. Um, boop, boop. Yeah, we'll send out next um, last week's notes and I can show you all um, also in the 
community platform uh, where you can get in all of this information. I've been storing it there. Um, great topics. Okay, so we'll go through that in a little bit. Okay. Okay, so good. So um, we'll keep going then. Um, so basic things about the client packages, and again, just talking about new and approved, figure out what you need to do to update to make sure that you are offering the relevant services. So basic things, um, you wanna make sure in your client package you're very clear as to what the clients are receiving. Um, just talking to some of the clients now, I know there's been more questions as to, okay, so how exactly can you help me now? So the traditional ways I know, you know, you may meet them at the doctor's office and, you know, while they are there for their doctor's appointment, but how can you help them now virtually? Um, and in the past, they know that, you know, you will do your two, three, how many ever postpartum visits in person and what you would do, but how can you help them now virtually? So that's been some questions that um, some of the clients have been asking me and other doulas. So I would just encourage that as we are updating our client packages, being clear as to what we are able to do um, and what we were going to offer them in the packages. So I know many of our packages in the before probably said, um, you know, postpartum visit, but what are we doing in that postpartum visit? Let's get a little more detailed and clear. I think that can help with communicating. Um, you want to make sure you have clear descriptions of the services and the products because um, a postpartum visit from one doula can be totally different than a postpartum visit for another doula. So you want to make sure you're clear as to the description as to the service. And um, there's some doulas that won't do any sort of sibling support. Um, there's doulas that will really only focus on the mom and the baby. And that's totally fine if that's what they want to do. But you want to make sure you're setting the right expectations by being clear as to the descriptions that you're offering in your package. Because again, it can vary. Um, prices. You want to make sure you're clear as to what the prices are for their investment. For if you have, you know, a silver, gold, platinum package or package A, B, and C or whatever the package is, you want to make sure you're just clear as to the investment and the differences between the packages. There's been quite a few um, questions that we've had in a couple of weeks and people have emailed me um, about how to set uh, prices for the package. And two main things that I always say, it depends on your area. Um, it can vary, you know, uh, it's very common to have a birth or labor package in my area it can be easily $900, $1,500, just depending on where, you know, what the service is and, you know, where you are versus, you know, I'm originally from the South and South Carolina, those are not the prices that would be for a going rate for packages there. Um, so you want to make sure you look at your area. One of the key or easy way to find out like, okay, what kind of ballpark um, for the prices in my area, I um, would recommend going to like md.com or careerbuilder.com or any um, career like job posting site that you're aware of that has kind of national data um, because you can do a search in your area, in your state, you know, in your region. Um, in your community, maybe your city, you can do a search, um, you can drill it down and, and definitely go larger and it can let you know what the average prices are. Um, if you don't see a job posting or anything like that for a doula, you can certainly look for home health aid. Nope, we are not necessarily home health aids. Um, I, my practice that is one of the services that we offer, um, but I, I recommend just doing a quick search for home health aid in your area if you don't have any sort of ideas to where to start with your pricing. Um, whatever that price is for home health aid, double it. That could be a starting point for you can at least think about what um, the cost is in your area. For example, DC area, a home health aid is about $13 an hour. I totally, as a doula, don't recommend you doing hourly prices because um, it's based on the value because you got to think about it. Um, as a doula, you may do $20, $30, $40, whatever for an hour, but that birth can be 12 hours. So you want to make sure you are pricing your packages based on your value and not by the hour time frame. Um, but again, um, home health aid is an easy search you can do because um, they is similar in some ways um, the services that we offer and then just doubling in your area to figure out what is a good starting price point that you can use to gauge when you're setting the prices for your packages okay and postpartum um not just necessarily for postpartum but just in 
all your packages. I'm seeing a lot more, um, if, if here's some success stories from doulas, a lot more about um, add-ons and optional services. And so um, traditionally you might have a package that had, you know, a birth package that may have had, you know, um, child educating course or two or three appointments before um, delivery. Um, or meeting them at the hospital, um, and then it also would have some postpartum pieces to it. Um, some of the doulas that I've been speaking to have been having success with breaking those packages out, so they're not necessarily a full traditional package, but it's more of a one, two, um, three items within a package, and then a whole bunch of add-ons or optional services that the mom or the family can continue to add on as they figure out what their needs are. So they're not necessarily locked into a larger price point investment or package. So it's just an option. Um, guarantees, you wanna just make sure you're clear now, especially with the changes as to what you're committed to be able to do. Um, some areas, some doulas are not able to go to the hospital. In my area and some of the areas around here, we are still able to go to a hospital um, in New York. So depending on where you are, figure out exactly what you're able to guarantee in this time frame, in this climate, and make sure that your packages reflect that as well as your contracts. So we'll talk about contracts again next week. So I won't go into all those details, but you just want to be very clear, you know, if you're uh, guarantee is that you will be able to get to the birth, you know, once they are admitted um, within two hours, three hours, you want to make sure you're very clear on that. Um, if you have some nuances or some things that you want to make sure that they um, know about you, about your service, make sure you put that in as your guarantee. So again, with the changes now, it's just being a little bit more clear as to what we're able to offer in this virtual world and what that looks like. Because a lot of moms, you know, everybody's trying to figure this out, especially moms. They may have said, oh, I want a doula. And that's, there's some um, doulas that said some moms are canceling on them because they're like, we, we don't we don't need it anymore because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. But as they have that conversation about, okay, so this is one way that we can change it up or we can um, modify it, then they're realizing, oh, okay, then yeah, I still can use your services or still would like um, what you can help me and my family with. And so just being clear with your packages and your offerings helps. Um, emergency options, I'm seeing this being used a lot. And I'm going pretty quickly because I want to make sure we have time to chat. Emergency options, um, which is kind of a, a emergency plan or package where it may just be an hour base. So three hours, five hours, um, it's a set fee. I've seen um, three hours for $200, three hours for $500, depending on your area, where the mom doesn't necessarily need to say up front or the family what it is that they want, what it is that they need. Um, they're not saying, I need you to come help me breastfeed. They're not saying, I need you to come help me with food. They're not saying, I need you to come help me with laundry or they're not saying I just need you to come and talk to me so I don't lose my mind kind of thing but they're just saying these are a bucket of hours that are emergency options so if they need to go to the hospital can you meet me at a hospital or a bucket of hours they can call you in the middle of the night can you come whatever the case is um, so it's an emergency option it's just a um, it's a, a add-on to a package where just for a set fee you're kind of open and starting to put some sort of guidelines around it but you're open to um, um, addressing some unexpected or um, not previously identified need that the mom um, can, that has, and so they'll be able to tap into it and is already um, an agreement that you will be available for that for whatever hours or whatever time period. So those are just some quick updates and reminders just about our package components, whether it's birth or postpartum, as to what we want to make sure we're clear on and what some of the tools that in our community, and we have been talking about that, um, have expressed has helped them to maintain, retain some of their clients, as well as to pick up some new ones um, in this um, time that we're living in. And I'm going to honor our time. I know we're hitting one o'clock, so I'm going to do um, show quickly the other document, and then we can open it up for chat. So let me pause the video. And let me go to the other document. And again, I'll send this all out so um, everybody can see it and you know review it at your own your own time your own will uh, let's see let's go share so one i wanted to just share um is another document that just talks about some ways um some tools that we can use to be virtual as well as to document 
or to share documents um, amongst our clients. And so, of course, we're on Zoom. Um, there's a lot of different um, video platforms out there, um, Skype, WebEx, Microsoft Teams, um, Google Hangout. Um, but then I put a couple in here about documentation tools. And I did this because I want us to be positioned well that when um, right now we can talk to our clients you know via email we can have a zoom chat with them um, but then i'm just thinking forward as to in two months or three months or if they call you again next year you know they have a you know get pregnant again next year or two years from now then where would you record that conversation that interaction or those nuggets that you have gleaned from their conversation with them that could be helpful in future in future chats and so having things like trello or um, google dropbox or Bay camp or um, whereby or one of these other tools that includes documentation that can help you so then that way you can um, not only meet the need now to communicate with the mom and the family but you have some sort of way to record or, or um, have a record of you know I went on such and such day and the main issue was you know breastfeeding or I went on such and such day and we thought we we're going to talk about this but I really found out she was more interested in this or provided a service and so being able to record record not only um, um, at that time, but record the interactions that you can use in the future. So that's why I combined it to have communication and documentation tools, because um, I think uh, we want to make sure that we, in this virtual world, that it doesn't get lost what we're doing when we need to refer back to it in two months, three months, or however, whenever in the future. Um, I haven't, so I just put this list. There's tons more you can research. I haven't used all of them. I used quite a few of them. Um, so if you have any questions about any of them, feel free to reach out to me. Um, this is just some examples as to some add-ons or some ways to enhance or update our client packages, some services that we've made not done in the past, um, and, and some ways to clarify what we will be doing when we um, help them virtually. Um, from You can have a breathing technique session, um, you can have a hospital bag discussion, um, uh, hospital bag and logistics check-in so that can be all the way down to you know in a zoom chat you're meeting with the mom and you say okay put your bag on the bed let's go through the items you know did you remember this did you remember that um you know that recently in your area of the hospital that you want to give birth to that this policy change or that policy you know this or that change um having that type of discussion um paperwork prep session again these are things you can do virtually um a lot of insurance forms um uh, wills those types of documentation legal um hr forms where you know the mom is on maternity leave uh, being able to make sure that they fill out as much as they can before the birth uh, can certainly be a help. So maybe we can help them with that virtually. Um, childbirth education, certainly we can do that virtually. Sibling and pet preparation. Don't forget about the pets because they sometimes too have a shock um, when the newborn is um, brought home. So this again, these are just some examples of um, items or ideas of ways that we can update our client packages to be a little bit clearer as to what we are able to provide that may be different than what we provided in, you know, in the past. Uh, postpartum, it can be anything from um, formula and feeding review, which is something I do quite often with clients. Um, a lot of my clients are certainly breastfeeding, and we encourage that, and that is great. Um, but everybody can't breastfeed, or they have different situations. The formula, you know, as long as the baby is being fed, that's my motto. Um, so having a conversation about the formula, certainly you're not taking the space of the provider, your healthcare provider, but many times it's down to the mom is telling you to me, you know, I'm overwhelmed. There's so many different formulas. Which one do we go with? And so I do a review with them and then we ended up doing an Excel spreadsheet and we do it out where we look at the ingredients of, of the formulas, you know, the vendor of the formulas, the price point for the formulas in your area. And then we just help her come to an educated, um, uh, decision as to which formulas to try and then she can you know get one or two and then she go and talk to her provider to have that final discussion to figure out which one out of those two that we've narrowed it down to 
to figure out which one is the best formula. So those types of interactions are things that I think if we explain and express that to our clients and to our moms, they can totally understand how as a doula being virtual, we can certainly provide value. Um, one of the other things, um, I can't do it right now, but one of the things that I added to my package before um, that really was a good win, <laughs> a lot of clients loved it, was date night sessions. So that's not necessarily a traditional doula activity, um, but over those first three months, six months of um, that newborn being home, a lot of moms definitely can enjoy having a date night out, but they may not want to ask the mom or, or the grandparents or family friend, but they trust you. They know you, you know that baby, you know their family, you know how they operate. And so being able to put in your package that you have date night um, options or sessions that you can do for them. Um, if you have a mom meetup in the area, you can certainly make sure that they are aware of when they can meet up with other moms virtually or in person whenever that can happen again. So I'll send this out, but these are just options, again, that we can consider when we're thinking about what can we add to our packages um, to make sure that it's meeting the needs of their moms and to still express that we are totally valuable and have a lot that we can offer in this virtual world. So I'll send that out. So let me stop sharing. And again, and I see there's some chat conversation going on, so I definitely will switch over to that and make sure. Okay, so just wanted to open it up. Are there any, okay. Oh, a question about the community. Yeah, definitely. We have um, the Looming Birth Workers community that's launching next month. I'll share some more information about that, but let me unmute everybody. Do you, well, or you can unmute yourself. Did anybody have any questions about what we talked about and or um, any suggestions about what has worked well with any packages, changes, or price points, or anything like that that they uh, would like to share? Yeah. Okay. Well, while we're thinking about that. Thank oh. you. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I love the drive-by idea. Yeah, love that because um, we recently did a happy 60th drive-by birthday party. Oh, I and I, I hadn't thought about um, a, a driveway conversation uh, with one of my moms. Mm -hmm. um, I did just send out Mother's Day cards. Awesome. Um, to yeah. my mom. So that's another way to keep in touch. But thank you for the drive-by. I think that's a, a really interesting suggestion. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, there's even a mom so the drive-by is something you can do is quick you know it's not a big time commitment especially for the mom you don't know how yep. her day is going to go so forth um but then i don't know if i've shared before i may have shared in this community but um one of my other jewelers that i coach she um does artwork um and she actually sets up an easel and she does artwork and one of her clients um driveways and her client is uh loves art as well and is committed to it so from her front porch they paint and they talk <laughs> and others have actually joined them in their community so um it's it, it is it, the sky is endless if we really think about it there's many ways to stay connected and um make sure the mom knows that they're valued and that you're able to help them awesome any others i had an idea hey rachel what's that hi um, last week I had talked about the virtual scavenger hunts as yeah. an educational tool yeah. um, for the people that aren't aware of what happened last week. I had set up a virtual scavenger hunt um, for new parents that had a list of everything that they really should have on hand when they have a baby. And um, I'm actually having it next weekend. I had planned it for this weekend and realized it's Mother's Day. <laughs> Probably not a kid. So um, I set it up for next weekend. And if you need any um, information, um, I can post my email so that you can email me and ask questions about how I, how I did that. Yeah. But I also had another idea. Um, like, there's a lot of information out there on virtual baby showers mm. um, i love the art idea doing a zoom meeting because i do diamond paintings not I, I paint with beads instead of um watercolor or oil paintings oh. and so um i've done a lot of ultrasound or first baby pictures so i thought maybe i could add that as a service where they uh, you know i can set it up and send them the diamond painting and then they can do it themselves. Love it on their time, um, yeah. I also thought about using that as a form of bereavement, um, not necessarily counseling, but a way for them to work it through. Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, definitely. Um, even um, you know, like coloring books, like adult coloring books are so hot, and it just help with um, meditation or just processing things. Just so anything like that where you're moving and being creative, yeah, absolutely. And distractions. That's mm -hmm. where I've I've tried to have to think, you know, pick my own brain about distractions, especially now with women home on their own a lot, or they're home with a baby or a new child, yeah. you know, trying to come up with distractions, ways for them to take their mind off of it, but still being connected with the fact that they have a new child or yeah. they're, they're grieving. Yeah. So, you know, that is something that I've been working on. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Please do share. I've got a couple people in the chat that want some more information. So I, yeah, I could make sure we send it out as well. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, um, are there any others before I want to show one last slide? Just want to make sure everybody's aware of, um, Oh, go ahead with somebody else. Okay, so just want to share. Um, I hope this information was helpful. Again, use the chat feature. Let me know if there's something that wasn't um, clear for you. I need to follow up with you some more information, or we need to uh, flesh out anything else in a future session. Let me know because this is it. This is our group. This is a way for us to chat, learn, connect. Uh, so the next conversation, we're going to talk about uh, contracts a little bit in the more it will not be legal advice i have to say that i talked to my attorney and he's like okay bianca i'm like i get it i get it so we're not talking about legal advice but just contracts how we set our contracts up how we may have modified our contracts now in this time frame um some doulas have even canceled um you know allowed clients to totally cancel it out some are doing a hybrid of it so just a conversation about how we can do contracts now um especially for um those who may have already paid deposits and things. So that's next week. And I am so, 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 so excited to share with you all that it's finally coming together that um, next month in June, we'll be launching the Birth Worker Community. And this is a um, platform that um, has a website. And, well, you know what? Let me see if I can. Um, it's a platform for anyone, all of us to come together um i've had many <laughs> doulas that say you know i wish we could connect on a daily basis you know not just fridays and i love that i appreciate that because that's letting me know that we are connecting how we need to connect especially in this time um but this is a uh, community platform for birth workers and i say birth workers because it can be for you know lactation consultants doulas midwife assistants midwives whomever that are in this birth worker world that are trying to provide value and in here um, on this platform um, we're going to have again discussions similar to this um, trainings that are available um, materials that um, are helpful about you know latest research or recommendations recommendations, uh, reviews of products such as, you know, baby wearing products to formulas, to, um, just at your fingertips, um, especially trainings that are going to be available, master classes. So we, um, I have some different industry experts that I have set up that are going to do um, interviews and it'll just be, all of this is just available to those who are part of this um, membership, this community. Um, so uh, the industry experts will be just talking from their experience as to how doulas can help and ways that they can interact with um, those who are in ally health or other providers. Um, we're going to have, when we can, <laughs> meetups in different areas. And so this is um, a great forum for us because we, as we um, interact with other doulas from different areas and different regions, uh, we see different needs and we see different opportunities to be of service. And so continuing that conversation, uh, I host a meetup in my area, in the Maryland area, um, on a monthly basis for moms as well as for doulas. Um, but this is one that for those who are in this community can certainly connect and recharge and build relationships. Um, you can never have too many doulas in your area that you know, that you trust, that you can call, in, especially in the time of need, if you need a backup or you need some assistance you never know um, and then there's also a store with some products that um, that will be helpful for all doulas so you never have to worry about that um, does your doula bag have everything you need to have in it uh, discounted products um, as well as if you want to send your mom uh, self-care packages um, so you can build that into your 
um, client packages that you offer is self-care packages on a monthly basis will be sent out to moms, um, especially in the postpartum phase. I think that'll be very helpful. So this is just a little bit of what's going to be available in the platform. Um, it will be available June 1st and launching it. And so I just wanted to share this with this community. Um, it's two separate things. And so on Friday at noon, we certainly will still have this chat. Um, it's totally free, totally one com. You know, everybody can participate. But this is a different um, uh, platform I want to share just about the uh, com this community here, the uh, community platform. So it starts June 1st, it will be live June 1st, but if there's anybody on this call or anybody um, that you know that's interested in it, um, it is a subscription base. Um, so if anybody um, signs up before June 1st, then you'll be considered a founding member and you'll be locked into the founding member um, price, which is $32 a month. Um, those at, that sign up after June 1st uh, will have, a, they certainly can sign up anytime, but it'll definitely be a higher price point that they're locked into. And so I'm very excited about this because there's a lot of associations and communities out there, but not necessarily ones that have all the materials and information that's available at the fingertips that are pertinent to us as doulas, um, as birth workers, that's vetted, um, you know, that's factual, that's coming from trusted resources. So that's the goal of this um, community platform. So just wanted to share that with everyone and it's a way for us to keep in touch as well certainly join us on fridays um but we we're going to have go into even more depth and have other ways to connect um for those who are part of the blooming birth workers community here yeah uh any other questions i hope this was helpful y'all to get some information out of it and i'm excited to talk about contracts i'm kind of a geek in that way so <laughs> i can't wait for the next class cool awesome uh, oh, how much, um, so the so the community, the Blooming community uh, is $33 a month for those who are founding members. So if you sign up before um, June 1st, and it's $33 a month, it's a subscription base. Uh, after that June 1st, um, people can certainly sign up, but it'll be at a higher price point. The class, the intensive class um, is $3.97. Okay. And to sign up, so let me just make it simple for everybody. To sign up for anything, just shoot me an email. <laughs> just shoot me an email. That'll probably be easier. Yeah, I can um, make sure we navigate. So awesome. I appreciate and I'm honored for you all to, um, coming and sharing with me in this time. I know we went over. Um, I try to keep it at an hour, but we went over. But I'm glad we were able to get some information in. So um I am appreciative and honored that you stayed with us um, to the end. And certainly, if you have any more um, uh, suggestions for our other chats coming up, please feel free to add. Thank you all. Love and light. See you all later.